West Region, can I start by asking you about the junior doctor strikes? Do you want them called off? Yes, as I've said today in an interview with, with The Sun, this government is incapable of resolving the dispute before polling day on the 4th of July. I don't think there's anything to be achieved by having strikes in the election campaign. The only thing we will see is more untold misery inflicted on patients who see their appointments and uh, so, procedures delayed, and also junior doctors out of pocket when I know that cost of living is a massive So, you, so you'll, you'll be saying to the BMA junior doctors uh, committee, you are wrong to go ahead with this strike? Yeah, I've called on them to, to call off the strikes in the election campaign, give change a chance on the 4th of July, knowing that if there is a Labour government, uh, on the 5th of July, I will be phoning them on day one yeah. and asking the department to get talks up and running urgently to see if we can offset and, and see off any future strike action and bring an end to this terrible So dispute. this strike is just wrong, full stop? I just don't think it's going to achieve anything during a general election campaign. I, I'm, I, I'm uh, beyond furious uh, that this is still happening. I thought it was disgraceful the way that Rishi Sunak sought to scapegoat and blame NHS staff during the Sky debate Yeah, yeah, this he week. didn't call the ballot. He didn't call the ballot. But let me just be absolutely clear about something. If you become Health Secretary, are you going to take their 35% claim seriously? As Keir Starmer said this week, we can't deliver 35%. The money isn't there. We're willing to uh, do two things. Firstly, negotiate on pay. I thought, it was, I thought it was fascinating, actually, and highly representative of their position, that when Keir said to the junior doctor in the audience at the Sky debate, uh, look, I can't meet you at 35%, the junior doctor said, well, we know that, we're willing to negotiate. And that's what I'm hearing from junior doctors and their representatives. That's the first thing. And secondly, okay. on, on conditions, I don't think people really understand how badly junior doctors are treated in terms of their placements, their rotations. I think one of the worst cases I've come across was a junior doctor whose partner had cancer, had two kids, and the NHS showed them no flexibility whatsoever in terms of where they were placed as a family okay. until there was a public outcry. Now, that's not acceptable, and it's those okay. sorts of things that are also at the heart of this strike and, the, and these disputes. And so Let, moving on pay and conditions uh, would be my approach if I'm the health secretary. Let's talk about the overall campaign. You, you, no doubt, whatever I try to do, you're going to take up quite a lot of this interview banging on about how Liz Trust crashed the economy, Tory coasts and all that. Um, your theme is change. Yet, according to your manifesto, you plan to spend just under an additional £10 billion in a total spending envelope north of £1 trillion. Given the scale of change that you're going to tell me is necessary, um, that's a pretty pathetic level of ambition. I don't think so. Firstly, it's necessary realism. It's less than 1%. But the public finances are in a total state. Secondly, take the NHS, where we've committed £2 billion. That will fund 40,000 more appointments every week at evenings and weekends to cut waiting lists. That's a massive difference for the 7.5 million on the NHS waiting list. 8,500 more mental health workers, a real change for people who more than a million stuck on mental health waiting lists. If we're able to double the number of CT uh, and MRI scanners, that's real change for 1.6 million people I'm, waiting for diagnostic I'm not, tests I, and scans. Not, mental health support in every primary and secondary school I, in I'm the country, do, real change for young people. Community mental health okay. hubs in every community. You've told me this change. before. I'm not going to deride these points, but honestly, Scale of change is what we're talking about. The Nuffield Trust um, said has made an assessment of your promises and what they say, both you and they also say this about the Conservatives, your promises will basically, in the manifesto, will basically keep the uh, NHS uh, worse off than it was during the austerity years under Cameron and Osborne, lower spending increases than during those years, 2010 to 2015, under George Osborne. Well, I'll just say two things in response to that. Firstly, our manifesto is fully costed, fully funded, with promises we can keep and the country can afford. Secondly, not, well, where, where I disagree with I'm the Nuffield... The but where, but where I disagree with the Nuffield Trust and uh, is the assumption they're making that this manifesto is the grand sum total of any future budgets and any future spending reviews. That's just wrong. That's not the way election campaigns work. Where Labour is making the fundamental argument at this election is we've got to get the economy back to growth. Because if the economy had grown under this government at this, just the same rate it did under the last Labour government, there'd be tens of billions of pounds mm -hmm. more to either invest in our public services or to put back in people's pockets. Okay. What we can't have, and you know, I right. think it is a fair it, point... Let me just but... stop you for a moment there. 
Did I just hear you say there could be greater spending increases for the NHS during the next parliamentary term than, it, than in your manifesto at present? Well, in the manifesto, you spell out your promises and you spell out how you're going to pay for them. And at the heart of Labour's manifesto, and it goes right back to your first question, is a brutal honesty about the fact that the public finances are in a real mess and worse still, Family finances are too. Forgive so me. what You're we can't do. My question. No, no, it's, my it's a direct question answer, is, Trevor. No, are I'm you saying the, that the there question. could be greater increases in spending on the NHS than are currently envisaged in the manifesto? It's straightforward. If 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 the conditions allow, but only if the conditions allow, because we're not going to make promises we can't keep, okay. and we're not going to make promises the country can't afford, and, and that's the challenge at this election. What we can't do now is what the last Labour government did, which is to say we're going to put a penny on national insurance because we know viscerally that families can't afford it because they're already paying a very heavy price, the highest tax burden in 70 years, thanks to the Conservatives. So we are okay. making hard choices. We make no apology for that. And going back to the point well, of change, Trevor... Let's talk about your choice. Let's, let's, let's talk about your choices. Because I think you've been quite clear. If you, get, if you, you have more money available, you'll spend it uh, on the NHS. Um, or, or putting back in people's but, pockets but, or any of the number of other great things we would love to be able to do, but at the moment, the money isn't there. Did, did I hear tax cuts there? Well, look, Rachel Reeves says she wants to bring the burden of taxation on working people down. Like, of course we do. But with this manifesto, the promises we make, the, the way in which you had to get into that manifesto, and yeah. let me tell you, having run that gauntlet with Keir and Rachel... Unless you could look them in the eye and say, this is a promise we can keep okay. and a promise the country could afford, it didn't make it in the manifesto. And, and, and I'd say to people who are... Because there's so much right. cynicism and lack of trust at the moment. To people who are saying, are you sure you're going to keep your promises? You can, you can kind of see proof of that with the fact there are lots of people saying, well... Why aren't you spending on this? Or why aren't you spending on that? And we've had to say no to lots right. of people because we're shown that discipline. No, look, this is very, this is very good. And, I, I'm, and I'm not going to uh, repeat what I suspect some cynics are saying out there right now. Oh, Labour promises jammed tomorrow. I want to ask you, though, if there is more money, if there are possibilities, how would you... What, what choices would you make? And I, I want to put one specific thing to you, which we know you're going to do. Um, a British child is almost twice as likely to be in poverty as a British pensioner. Yet you've committed to the triple lock on pensions, which adds £13 billion to spending this year alone. That number's going to go up. So you're choosing to spend more, £13 billion quid, on 12.5 million well-off elderly people, like myself, uh, than on the you're rest of Don't the population. Don't put yourself down, Charlie. I'm you're a not that old. I'm not putting myself down. We pensioners are a golden generation, mate. So, but, but my point is that uh, you're spending more on us than on the rest of the population's education, health and housing. Because your total spending increases don't, don't hit 10 billion. You've actually made a choice uh, to support that group of people. Actually, that's what the Conservatives do. You're not changing anything. Well, uh, two things. F firstly, I think... It is important that we, we look after pensioners in our country, not least because when you plan for retirement, you, you, you plan ahead. I'm not and when you, and when you get to And when you get to retirement, what, what you, I could where's do... Where's the change in but, that? But it's an important point about pensioners because, you know, what I could do is I, if I wanted to earn more money, I could go out and look for more work, I could, I could look for more hours. Pensioners don't have that freedom and flexibility because, by definition, but, they are retired. And I but, just don't, I don't think that's... But, but, but Wes, a child can't do that. But the point I'm really no, asking... No, but, and, and that really brings me back to child, is, but that me back to child poverty, which you're, is... You keep, you've got this big thing, change. And I'm saying, actually... And I'm not making a, a judgment about whether it's right or wrong, but it's no different than what the current government does. <laughs> you've chosen to support and to reward a particular group and not another. If we have free primary breakfast clubs in every primary school, as Labour is committed to and has funded, that is real change for kids who are turning up for school with hungry bellies rather than hungry minds. That's real change for those kids. If those kids are in science and maths lessons being taught by... Uh, PE teachers, because the teachers aren't there, Labour's 6,500 more teachers to plug the shortage 
is real change. The last Labour government lifted more than a million children out of poverty after 1997. We didn't have, okay. interestingly, in 1997, but, ending child poverty in our manifesto. But you're not really answering But that's what Labour governments do. And what we have got in our manifesto is a clear commitment right. for a child poverty strategy to end child poverty in our country. And I'll tell you something else right. about the state of child poverty got... today, which is that we've got... The, the big driver of okay. poverty is people who are... Parents who are in work but not earning enough to make ends meet. That is a very different equation to what we had in the 90s and yeah. 90s. Yeah, sure, no, so, was... And that's why our approach has got to All be right. not just more welfare, but I, also I, I, better wages, I, better I, I terms and conditions. I understand all of that, but you still haven't answered my question about choice. But let me put another simpler choice to you. Your, your leader says he won't raise income tax, won't raise VAT, uh, basically no increase in personal taxes. Well, since 2010, the Conservatives have allowed... Uh, the tax thresholds to rise steadily. Um, and the tax burden at its highest level in 70 well, years. Well, let's just talk about personal taxes. Back in 2010, 3.3 million people paid high rate taxes. By 2027, on current plans, which you've accepted, that number will be 8.7 mm. million. Uh, it's estimated, by the way, uh, by tax experts, that that equates to something like a 3.5% rise in tax, uh, rate of tax. Now, you're not going to change the threshold. You've been clear about that. So the statement that actually you're not raising income tax is a con, isn't it? No, it is, it is a reflection of the fact that the public finances are in a state. There are things... No, it's would, a I reflection mean... of the fact that another 5 million people are going to go into the higher tax bracket. Somebody who gets promoted, who owns an, an extra four or 5,000 pounds, is suddenly going to find that spend, instead of... Uh, uh, paying tax at the rate of 20, 21%, they'll be paying it at 40%. Well, we're not... It's we're, increasing. We're not, we're not comfortable about that. Rachel Reza says she wants to reduce the burden on working people, but it comes back to the fundamental test of our manifesto. Everything in it has to be a promise we can keep and a promise the country can afford. Right. Of course we would like to go further on so many fronts. But it's but not we are dealing with My point We are dealing with changed, a fundamentally weak economy and public finances that are an absolute state. And I just warn okay. people against this backdrop of breathtaking complacency okay. in the media about the opinion polls. Do not give the matches back to the arsonists to finish the job, but because the Conservative well, well, spending returning, plans, which are not being scrutinised... You returning to the Tories. They're not, might... well, but it's crucial, because this is the choice, Trevor. This is no, the choice. No, it isn't the Do choice. Do people want to see Liz Truss's mini-budget on steroids, which is the Conservative manifesto, being delivered if there's a nightmare on Downing Street on July the 5th? Or do they want to see a stable economy with economic growth, shared prosperity, enable us to invest in our what? public services without clobbering working okay, people with one, taxes? One, That's uh, the choice. I, I'm going to give this one last go. You keep talking about change, you keep talking about the choice, but you keep the Tory spending plans, you keep their tax plans, you won't tell us what you're going to do about council tax, you won't tell us what you want to do about other taxes like inheritance and capital gains. Where's the change? The change is in 40,000 more appointments every week to cut waiting lists okay. for the 7.5 million on waiting lists. Right. The change is 13,000 more police officers on the street so that we can rebuild neighbourhood policing. The change right. is 6,500 more teachers in our classrooms so kids aren't taught maths and science by PE and geography teachers. The All change right. is mental health okay. support in every primary and secondary school in the country to okay. deal with the young people's mental health crisis. Okay, I don't want to be impolite, but no, you're repeating no, but, yourself. No, hang on, I'm sorry, Trevor. You can't you're say there's yourself. no change and then not give me a chance to set but the change But you've said all out. that already. We yeah, know that. And I can go, go into even more of our policies but, in the manifesto. Oh, well, please but, don't. Please don't. Let me, let me no, ask... But this, this is the thing, though, isn't it? You know, you say, oh, you, this is the cynicism. This is the wall of cynicism. This is the wall of cynicism that the Labour Party has to overcome in the run-up to the general election. No, I'm simply saying... Saying that this we've been talking com this complacency. Yeah, we've been, we've no been talking change, for but twelve. When we set it out. You don't want to hear it. No, I, I've heard it. We've been talking for twelve or thirteen minutes, and you're telling me the same thing for the third third time. Let me just put something else to you. Um, okay, you could be in government on July the fifth. You're going to have to persuade the British people to, as you've already said to this morning, to go along with some pretty difficult decisions. Um, let me ask you this. Here's the guy who's got, supposed to charm and cajole the public into taking this. Medicine. Over the last year, I feel like you've formed into more of a politician than the person that I would have voted for to run the country. Um, you seem more like a political robot. How are you? How are you going to convince others like me to vote for you? Well, um, the most. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, all, all I can say, I, I, I 
went to run the Crown Prosecution Service. You ref I referenced I'm not that. Ask I was you the to chief do prosecutor. Television criticism on your leader, but you had four days to think of what Wes Streeting would have done in that situation. Um, and don't pretend you haven't thought about it. Let's role play. You come in here, and I say to you, come in here week after week. You're a bit robotic. robotic. Persuade me that you haven't had the chip implanted. Well, I mean, I've, I've, you've already criticised me for the fact that I've been reeling off Labour's first steps for government. Um, and look, um, I actually thought the most powerful... Well, there were a number of powerful moments in that debate the other day, which is why I think people who, who watched it thought that Keir won convincingly compared to Rishi Sunak's performance. Um, I, I thought his most powerful moments were firstly when he was talking about his family, both in terms of his worries as a parent about his kids, about the way in which his parents and their lives have shaped who he is and what he's about. And secondly, the connection that allows him to build with the struggles that, and the worries and anxieties that millions of people across the country have at the moment. And, and these are people who, let's be honest, this weekend are either thinking about the Euros, looking up at the sky saying, where's our summer? or looking at their bank balance and how much of the month is left versus the lack of the money that's left. And he gets all of that. Uh, I think compared to Rishi Sunak, when it comes to who is more in touch and who has the answers for the country's future, Keir Starmer wins by a country mile. The only question is whether people are willing to give that change a chance by voting Labour on the 4th of July. This election is not settled yet. I do not want people okay. to wake up to a nightmare on Downing Street on the 5th of July. People are already starting to vote by post. I yeah, urge okay. people, don't give the matches back to the arsonists. Choose change and choose a okay. decent, outstanding leader for our country. Keir Starmer's changed the Labour okay. Party. He's got the strength to change our country for the better too.